Okay, welcome everyone to a user orientation part two. You have already finished part one, so this is part two. And uh, we're going to talk in English today, okay? Because I heard you all speak excellent English, and uh, this is all part of preparation for the program, okay? <laughs> all right, if you don't understand anything now, uh, I'm not joking. If you don't understand anything, please uh, say I don't understand that and we can repeat in Serbian, of course. All right, so um, you finished your first part of orientation, which was more technical uh, and uh, with Ayusa people. So who am I? I'm uh, Irena. I'm a psychologist. I work as a psychotherapist and HR uh, consultant. And I was invited by Ayusa because I used to work for Ayusa, so I know a lot about this program. And uh, I used to live in the USA as well. I finished my high school there and uh, I went there as a tourist many times. I actually have a brother who lives there and who married American and has a huge family. So um, I know a few things about American culture as well. And what are we to going to talk about today? So, <coughs> as our title says, you're a step away from the USA. You will have a wonderful, adventurous program, but it's not going to be easy. We're here today to talk about this challenging part, not only the good parts of the program, but the challenging, challenging parts as well. And uh, I invite you to think together with me and uh, to talk together, of course, and uh, see what's, uh, what's actually bugging you and what's, uh, what do you see now as a possible challenge, possible problem. Uh, Ayusa and Intrux wanted to thoroughly prepare you for the program. This part uh, is new for this year. We didn't have this last year, uh, but students told us that we need to put in something about uh, uh, American culture, uh, differences between America and Serbia, so that what they call, call a cultural shock gets easier when you get there, okay? Um, we have many second comers here, people who were already on the program. How many people were on the program al already last year or before? Okay, not so many. And we have two gentlemen over there. Thank you very much for coming today. They're going to share their experiences with you and you will be able to ask them some questions about their program. They have already been in America on this program. So topics for today. Your employer in the USA and something about employers in the USA, Olga from USA. Uh, survey results. If you remember, we did that short online survey two months ago. So uh, we have some interesting results that we wanted to share with you. Uh, differences between Serbia and the USA and experiences from the program from Vukashin and Stefan. Olga. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to firstly thank you all for coming this morning. I know it's Sunday and you'd rather be probably home, but this is going to teach you a lot before you arrive to the States. The first thing I would like to talk about is housing. It is very important that you find housing before you go to the States. So make sure that you have some kind of housing, even if it's not permanent, even if it's for the first two weeks. It's important, though, that you have some place to stay when you arrive. So please be proactive. Use uh, I don't know, Craigslist, uh, Airbnb, maybe sublet.com, all these different sites that you can find housing, but you must have housing on the date that you arrive there. The second thing I would like to talk about is the arrival dates. You all signed an agreement with your employer and you agreed to a date that you're going to start work. So that date is the date that you're expected to be in the company, ready to do your orientation, to start practicing for work and your end dates. You also signed the date until you agreed you will work upon, until. It's very important that you work until that date. Even if it's not busy, even if the season is dying, you must work until that end date because the employer is counting on you. He needs you even if it's not that busy at work. Uh, your primary job is the job that you signed here in Serbia. You got the job you got here in Serbia to work. So that's your main employer and you always have to adjust your schedule according 
to your first job. If you find a second job, that's totally all right, but make sure that your schedules match up, that you're never late to your first job, that you always have your uniform clean and ready, and that you're always ready to work uh, whenever you're scheduled. Do not call in sick, do not, uh, not show up to work. Those are all things that are really unacceptable. And when you find a second job, it is necessary that you contact Intrex and let them know for what company you're gonna be working for. Uh, you already did the first part of the orientation where you talked about the documentation, paperwork, social security number, bank accounts, paychecks, and all that stuff. A couple of things I would like to emphasize are your, uh, are your, sorry, your insurance. You have your insurance during the four months that you're on your work visa, but you don't have it the fifth month. So make sure that you get your insurance if you're traveling for the fifth month. And also contacting Intrax. When you arrive, you have three days to contact Intrax to let them know that you arrived. If you do not do so, you might have problems, well actually you'll definitely have problems getting your social security number, and you might have problems that in the end you'll be deported and not be legal in the United States. So make sure that once you arrive, three days upon that, you must contact Intrax. Also during the summer, you're gonna get notifications from them every month to ask you, how are you doing? Is everything good at work? It's a five minute survey you need to fill out please do so again so you don't lose your visa status. And before arriving to the States, MyInterex has been sending you all sorts of notifications. Make sure that you fill out when your flights are, when are, is your visa date, did you get your visa, did you fill out the orientation that they require. So make sure you do everything that MyInterex sends you and your housing information as well so that they know when you're arriving, where you're gonna be staying so they can contact your employer and let them know as well. That will be it for me. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Olga. These are very important information, so if somebody has any questions for Olga or if somebody didn't understand something, please ask. Okay. Uh, now, as you know, we are talking about two very different environments, Serbia and the USA. Uh, they, there are some similarities, of course, but we are going to point out the differences today. And uh, uh, what's so different in the USA? Uh, first of all, laws and constitution. We are talking about a huge country. It's like, for comparison, it's like similar if we are talking about a large company compared to a small company of three or five people, okay? So you need totally different set of laws. In America, they have federal laws, state laws, and uh, local laws uh, that you will be asked to uh, oblige. And uh, mm, the two laws that I would like to point out today are concerned uh, drugs and alcohol. So you're not allowed to drink if you're under 21. And uh, uh, also about the drugs, of course, you're not allowed to do any drugs at any point. So uh, please be careful about that. They're very strict about that. Culture and mentality. Americans have some values that are somewhat different than ours. Um, for example, punctuality. As you can see, we were like 15 minutes late today due to some good reasons of course but uh, Americans don't like being late they like being on time and they will expect you to be on time we here even have you know like academic 15 minutes where it's okay to be late in university for like 15 minutes they don't do that they're uh, when they say like 11 o'clock they mean 11 o'clock okay and you better be there like a couple of minutes before 11 uh, personal responsibility and individual versus social support. Uh, <clears throat> we here gravitate towards our groups. We have our little groups like family group, like uh, mm, friends group, like colleague group uh, at university. Americans are more individual and you will feel it everywhere. And they will expect you to take your personal responsibility for whatever you do. You, uh, whether it's a success or a failure, you will be responsible for it. And maybe this will be the first time that you don't have any group, that you don't have your mom or your sister or your brother to help you with that. Uh, but it's something new that you will learn. Maybe it will be hard, but it's a new thing that you will learn and that's very important. 
Uh, sport and hygiene. Americans are very much into sports, not only watching but doing sports. And uh, it's uh, not really likely that you will meet an American who is not somehow into some sports. And also they take care uh, about their personal hygiene. Uh, for us, they might seem even a bit obsessed with it uh, because some people wash their hair every day and uh, use a lot of deodorants and uh, they will expect you as well to do so. So keep it in mind. Uh, political correctness. Americans really care about their minorities, about uh, different groups, groups that are different than them that's good for you because in some way you are going to be a different national group, okay? Uh, but uh, be careful with the jokes because we here have some jokes, you know, like based on different nationalities or races and for Americans that can be really offensive. So be very careful and also with the language, you know, sometimes we have those phrases like I'll kill you or you're so crazy and uh, you can end up in prison, literally, in America for uh, those kind of jokes. So be very careful when you make those jokes, or better yet, don't make those jokes. Uh, and um, generally, our language seems a little bit too harsh for Americans. So try to smoothen it a little bit with please and thank you. Americans use them a lot. Sometimes it's really irritating. They use it really, really a lot. So they will expect you to use please and thank you whenever you can, okay? All right, and uh, keeping a secret, yes. There are no champions in keeping the secret, okay? We had some cases in Ayusa where a student told his new friend, American friend, about some girl he liked or some boss he disliked or something like that and the next day everybody knew it. So be careful about that. Don't tell your intimate secrets to the people you're not really familiar with or uh, wait until you get to know somebody better before you tell them the secrets. And about the work ethics, uh, Olga told you a lot about it. and. Uh, uh, I would just like to mention that uh, Americans have many procedures and trainings, even for some things that we find self-explanatory, like uh, how to wash the floor, okay? Why would I need a procedure for that or training for that? But their trainings and their procedures are based on the previous experiences and uh, I strongly recommend that you follow them and uh, that you read your manuals, that you go to your training, not only because you're going to learn about the job, which is important it itself, but uh, also because you can socialize there, you can meet your colleagues, you can meet uh, your manager better, you can ask the questions about your job and so on. And the hierarchy and relationship to authority, uh, most of you expect your manager to be like, uh, what, a middle-aged guy with a nice suit and uh, maybe eyeglasses or something. But what you meet when you come there might be a girl that's even younger than you, that might be tattooed or pierced or informally dressed or less educated than you maybe. She's still your boss, and as Olga said, it's very important to follow what bosses ask from you, so, and to be good to your boss, because this way uh, it's a win-win, okay? If you, you get better shifts, you get uh, uh, more working hours, you earn more, more money. Okay. And now we're going to see a short clip about somebody who didn't really know much about American culture when he went to the job interview. Mm. Tell me a little bit about what was the boss that you had at your last job. If I called him up and asked him what kind of employee you were, 
Uh, he will say a bad things, but that is because he is a liar. Okay. What things would he say? Um, he would say that I am uh, very uh, lazy. And what does he mean by that? He think I do not uh, like the work. Okay, what about the previous job that you had? What would that boss say about you? He also say a bad thing. He a liar too. Really? Yes. Okay, so all of your former bosses are going to lie about you? Uh, there is one that will say a good thing. Which one is that? Um, he uh, from a, uh, from a sales company, okay. but he uh, is a dead. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we can't get in touch with him. Uh, no. Do you feel like you're the kind of person that can work well with other people? Yes, I have very good work with other people, and I want you to know that I can uh, sniff out if there is a traitor in a company, really? and if I find them, I can finish them. Well, <laughs> really don't need you to do that. Tell me your strengths. Let's start off with your strengths. What are you good at? I am a very strong physique. Okay. I can hold a very large woman down for up to three hours. Okay. Do ladies work here? Yes, they do. Uh, do they have a nicer physiques? Yes, which I have to work with you on that because uh, in our workforce in the United States, everybody's looked upon as equal as far as men and women. What? <laughs> Do you have lawsuits? If you remember the term lawsuit, court, no. court suits, see, that could become a legal issue. If you give me this job, can I put a camera in the lady toilet, please? <laughs> Why not? If, if that is against the law. If I work here, can I work in a room with a light, yes, please? Yes, everybody will have a light. A great success. See? What do you want in a job? I will not work on anything that I get less than uh, six dollars for every week. Six dollars for every week. I will not work for this. Okay. In the United States, we have what we call minimum wage laws. That the company has to pay you at least, in Arizona, at least five dollars and fifty cents every hey, hour. Every hour. Every hour. But I want to work more than one hour a week. No, you work eight hours. You, you work 40 hours a week. I want more than $5.50 for 40 hours a no. I want $6. You'll get $200, $225. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Very much. Nice good luck. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I hope I have a good job. Okay. High five. <laughs> okay, we are moving now to survey results. You remember you filled in the online survey, like actually 90% of you filled in this questionnaire, which is excellent. Thank you very much for that. That's a huge sample. So um, we don't know what you personally said in this uh, questionnaire, but uh, we know the answers for the whole group. And now we are going to talk about that. And feel free to discuss the questions. If you have any questions of your own, please ask them now and, uh, mm, mm, and say if you have some comments. Uh, so uh, these are the general expectations from the program. 60% of you expect to travel. I think this is very realistic for most of you. 30% uh, expect to have fun. 26% uh, ex uh, expect to earn money. And every second student expect to uh, improve his or her English. I think that even more than every second student or 50% of you will improve their English. I think that everyone will improve their English. Maybe some people less, some people more, but you will all improve your English. Um, these are all realistic expectations. Uh, there is only one thing missing. You remember that this program is called work and travel. So the work part is missing from these expectations. You had some choices that deal with work, like I'm going to learn about the work ethics, I'm going to 
uh, meet some new colleagues at work, I'm going to meet American culture while working and stuff like that. Please remember that the primary goal of your first three or four months is working. So work and travel. Financial expectations. There are different financial expectations, as you can see. Some people expect to earn and bring back home. The question was, how much money do you expect to bring back home? Uh, uh, up to $1,000, and some of them expect to earn more than $12,000. All expectations, uh, we talked to Ayusa, we consulted with them, and they said everything is realistic. Uh, it depends on you how much you earn. And one more thing they said, uh, as Olga mentioned today, you need to stay with your first employer. If you're ready to find a second job, or some people even find a third job, then you can earn obviously more money. But uh, uh, be careful about that. You need to know your personal capacities because some people are not really able to work more than eight hours a day. Some people think they're able, but they're not able. So be very careful about that. Be, uh, uh, learn how to judge yourself and your own capacities. That's not easy. And expectations after the working part. So, of course, 80% of you expect to travel. Some people want to see one particular destination or two destinations. And some people said they want to travel all over America. That's a nice expectation, but I think uh, it's a little bit unrealistic because the U United States is a huge country. So maybe you should focus on one, two, three maximum destinations uh, when you plan your traveling. Also, 10% of people want to work during the travel month and you're not allowed to do this, okay? Your visa does not cover this. Uh, we know that some people did it uh, and you m most probably know some people who did it the, the last month, but uh, you're not allowed to do that and you can take the consequences if somebody catches you. Problem solving options at the workplace. <coughs> what happens if you have some troubles, if you have some challenges at your work? So 60% of people say that they will find a new employer on their own. And uh, almost 20, uh, another 20% 20 of people say that they will ask their friend to help them find a new employer. I must say that these are not the correct answers, okay? Uh, the correct answer uh, is trying to solve the problem at your workplace. So you should stick to your first employer once again and try to uh, find a solution, try to resolve the conflict with your employer. If you're not able to do that, that's okay. You should call Intrax, a use as overseas partner, Intrax. You will you got all the information about calling Intrax and uh, uh, if this doesn't work for any reason, if you cannot reach Intrax, if uh, they do not help you, then you call Ayusa. But these are the one, two, three, okay? You should try to solve it on your own, call Intrax and call Ayusa finally. Okay, so this is a little recap. Uh, respect the work discipline and ethics, we said. Uh, laws and rules, work time schedule, your job description. You will get the job description when you get there, or maybe you got it already. Uh, respect the procedures, uh, individual versus group responsibility, and communication with colleagues and bosses. We said use as many thank yous and please as you can, okay? So what are the possible consequences if we don't, don't act upon the rules? Uh, there are different consequences, uh, like short-term and long-term consequences. So you can maybe, if you don't get along with your boss, if you're uh, trying to uh, explain your boss that he's not right, you can get the lower compensation through, uh, through bad shifts or through uh, lower working hours. 
Or you can be, for more serious uh, fancies, you can be removed from the program, which is not good at all, because your visa is uh, automatically cancelled, you cannot work, you don't have health insurance, and that's the problem in America. So uh, there are also legal procedures for the severe uh, offenses and uh, uh, different kinds of punishments or even jail or deportation and uh, we even had the case of somebody being banned to return to the United States and that's really bad. You get that in your passport just to let you know. Back to the survey. We ask you what does typical American look like, according to your opinion, okay? And what does typical Serb look like? And this is what you said typical American looked like. So you said he's hospitable and sociable, but also he is obese, cheerful, 15 times less brave, six times less resourceful, three times less smart than a Serb. Three times more materialistic, three, uh, twice more lazy compared to a typical Serb, okay? Okay, you give them credit for something, that's true. Uh, you say they're twice more educated than Serbs and 10 times more individual, okay? And so what is that ser typical Serb like, you wonder, huh? So he's some kind of superhero. He's also hospitable and sociable, of course, but uh, he is resourceful, hardworking, brave. Some people say handsome and three times more smart compared to a typical American. Here are American and Serb. Okay, what do these results suggest? There are some stereotypes among us, okay? You know that word, stereotype, stereotypy? Okay, um, there is actually no uh, superior or inferior nation. We are talking about individual differences. You people here are all different <coughs> among yourselves. Uh, and uh, the differences can and will be spotted on the individual level when you're in America. Nobody is going to search for your background to tell you that you don't work hard enough or that you're an excellent worker. So it, it's a personal responsibility. Remember that I'm pointing out once again. And the success or failure of your program will be solely influenced by your personal efforts and dedication. Okay, Vukashin and Stefan will tell us a little bit about their experience on the program. And you will have a chance to ask them some questions. We have 10 minutes for this part. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for asking us. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bukashi. They're stars. Last summer I spent some months in My name is Stefan and this will be my third summer going to the United States as a part of the Work and Travel program. Uh, first year I was in Maine, last year in Martha's Vineyard. So today we're going to speak about our um, experience in Harbor Hill Hotel that we work with and on Martha's Vineyard. The place. So he will speak about the island, and I will speak about the job. So, so island is not as small as you think it is. The Martha's Vineyard is quite a big island. There are three towns on the island: uh, Oak Bluffs, Vineyard Finding Heaven, and uh, Every Town. So I know where you're gonna work at, but we worked in Every Town, and the uh, public transportation on the island is very good. You have buses. You can buy a bicycle, which is also a good thing. Um, so that's a little bit about it. We, we have great beaches there on, on, the, on the island. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's pretty much it. And do you have What's questions the about the island? Okay, never mind. About the work, I work in Harborview Hotel. It's like probably the best hotel in Martha's Vineyard, in my opinion. 
And I started working as a buster. After that, they promoted me food runner and an expediter, and finally as a server. So I worked for four months, and it was been an amazing experience. And it, I had a really good uh, co-workers and my supervisors, managers, and everything. So they're good guys. I mean, they are really they're, good they're guys. They're cool. Yeah, with really good guys. And uh, I will work as a pool attendant. So do you know something about that? Just uh, on the pool we have also like a bar or small restaurant. So uh, the Harvey Beef Hotel has basically three restaurants. Uh, so in the pool we're gonna be like a bus, so we're gonna carry food out from the restaurant to the pool guests or taking their drink orders or something like that. Or you're collecting towels and yeah. um, so standing up. Similar things. Yeah. We're gonna have different duties. Yeah. Also I worked as a banquet server. Uh, my duties were Organizing the uh, special events such as weddings, parties, uh, uh, conferences such as this one, we had like hundreds of similar things during this summer, uh, last summer, and it was also a great job. Uh, every day was different and fun. One more. So, did you stay a first night at Boston? Because my flight is late, and I heard that I yeah. can't transport myself at the first day. So, did you have that problem or not? Yes, I had that problem. I slept over in Boston the first night, and after that I catch the ferry, the Peter Pan bus, after that the ferry and the bus on island. Yeah. So, later, can you give me just the place where, where did you stay at Boston? Uh, I don't remember, <laughs> but you can type anything on the uh, website. Airbnb. Airbnb or Craigslist or whatever. And it's also good to see you spend the first day in Boston because Matos Vineyard is a little smaller community like this. You have a big, like a big city to visit. The first stop is a big city, so it's also going to be fun for you. Then. When you were coming to the uh, Martha's Vineyard, I think the uh, last bus from Logan Airport to Woods Hall is uh, at seven seven twenty, and the last ferry is at uh, nine thirty-five on weekends, and on the weekdays is eight twenty or eight thirty. So count to that so you don't spend a night sleeping on a bench or anywhere else. Where did you travel during your last month? Uh, during last month I traveled to Puerto Rico, Miami, New York City. Uh, also I visited whole Maine, Portland, Boston. Uh, those cities. Uh, East Coast. I've never been to the West Coast. Yeah. Me neither. I visit Miami, New York, Boston, and that's pretty much it. This summer I'll visit West Coast for sure. Uh, can you tell us about something about your accommodation? About my accommodation. Oh, it was, I mean, our employer, Harborio, has like, I don't know, a couple of houses that you are going to stay uh, in. So I don't know. I live in one house with three uh, roommates, two of those were Serbian, one was a Bulgarian guy, and pretty much we were all working in restaurants. So they are uh, ranging people like if you work as a um, housekeeper or a pool attendant, so they are, they want to make sure that you all get in one house so you can, it's easier for you to get to know each other better and everything, and it's really cheaper like on uh, that organization in Harvard. And Harvard has like 10 houses all over the island, so you don't know where you're going to be until you get there. So it might be you're going to be like five minutes from the uh, hotel or one hour with the bus from the hotel. So, but that's a lottery, you don't know anything about it until you arrive. Okay, any more questions? Maybe I have one question. How long was your progress? Because you, you told us that when you came to your that restaurant, that first of all you get some kind of job. I don't know what you got. Yeah, and, and in the end you, you were... I paid some money. Yeah. So how long was your progress? First I started as a buster, and after five days I they promoted the pool runner, and I worked as a pool runner for two or three weeks, I don't know. After that they worked as an expediter, and Last two months. What are possibilities to find a second job? Uh, there, there are uh, a lot of places you can find a second job. 
but you gotta be, you gotta try hard and uh, look for their second job. What about you? Uh, I, I work only one job. Only one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two jobs. What was your second job? My second job was a uh, bar back in one uh, restaurant. Okay. And it, it, it is easy to find, but I mean there is a lot of jobs, but uh, there is uh, a lot of people in dining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to look harder, you know. I look for one, one week or something like 10 days for second job, but eventually you will find it. Yeah. And can you tell me more about tips in Harbor, for example? Well, there are like 10 positions, and every every position in food and beverage has different uh, tips. So yes, if you exactly. work as a as a busser, <coughs> you're gonna have like. So I work as a, in the banquet team. So our tips uh, came from the uh, people who who like had a wedding in our hotel. So they paid I don't know. Uh, thousands of dollars for the um, food, for beverage, for room. We're gonna be a, we're gonna be a wedding, and 20% uh, from the from that amount goes to the uh, whole banquet team, and we're splitting that. And in food and beverage, like in restaurants, pastors yes. uh, and food runners get only like 20% of the servers' uh, tips. So if you're working as a food as a food runner or buster, you have. Ten dollars per hour plus tips, and it's like I don't know, in per week, two hundred dollars per week, something like that, in a season. And if you're working as a server, it's three dollars per hour, but you get a lot of more tips. Okay. So, yeah. okay, we have time for one more question. Does anybody have one more question? All that. Uh, what would you say was the most interesting experience, like a story or something that happened at work or something that happened with friends that you met there? I don't know right now. There's a lot of good stories and everything and every, this summer was really amazing and I don't know. Everything was so good. There was no special moment for me, I don't know. You gotta meet a lot of people, uh, <coughs> like Americans, they're like totally different nothing like you can see here and uh, that's the best experience of this program. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. One American uh, or U.S. state, uh, South Carolina, which is not the biggest state, not the smallest one neither, uh, 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 is appropriate to our country. Uh, so, and uh, whole America is 125 times as big as our country. It's a huge country. And uh, the same thing population-wise. Um, uh, you can see that only one big city in the United States, like New York City, has three times as big population as Serbia. What am I trying to tell you here? I'm not trying to tell you that America is better than Serbia because it's so much larger uh, or that it's worse or anything. I'm just trying to tell you that uh, the way uh, it's constituted uh, is because of its size, okay? Uh, so country this big requires a solid and stable system in order to be able to function well. Sometimes for us and for other foreigners, it seems too rigid. It seems like, oh, again, there are rules, there are laws and everything, but they need to do that in, or in order to function well. Also. Uh, when we're talking about the ethnic and uh, racial background, they're much more diverse than our country. And uh, there are many, many different nationalities living together in the United States. And they all mix together in one country and they're all called Americans, okay? So values and firm laws make prosperity and continuous advancement possible, actually. And uh, 
It's a very, very diverse community. And under the threat of terrorism and uh, also several terrorist attacks that they experienced, the rules get even more strict. So, as we said, there are big differences between these two countries. However, there are big differences between the people, between the values. However, there are many, many similarities as well between the people of the United States and the people of Serbia. Always keep in mind the, the, um, in mind the consequences of your actions. Maybe this will be the first time that you will be responsible for the consequences of your action. So, Keep them in mind. We mentioned some of them today. There are always a whole spectrum of choices. You know, sometimes people say, oh, I didn't have a choice. I had to do it. But you always have choice. Remember that. Uh, when you're in some kind of uh, mm, mm, situation, just think about that, that you have choice and uh, make the smart choice, please. And uh, the company and the friends you choose, uh, will be a mirror of yourself, actually, over there, and just like here. Uh, and the impression you leave is the impression about yourself, but also the impression about our country, about Serbia, and about Ayusa and their students. Okay, if there are any dilemmas during the program at any time, you know you're able to contact Ayusa. Okay. I have one question for you now. What is the most important thing or the, uh, that you learned today or that you heard today? One most important thing. Something new. For me, it's about our behavior and stereotypes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The research results, huh? Uh, not the, not the research, uh, research results. Uh -huh. Uh, but about, you know, the humor and, the, and the everything, you know, just, just the, the stereotypic, stereotypical, uh, our stereotypical behavior, it's not, it's not good for, for, for America, you know, for, for, for our progress uh, as an individual and it, as a group, you know, part of the group. That yes. Some of the things you will have to change there, but it's actually good because by changing, you're learning new things, new behaviors, which is good, which should be the, the aim, the goal of your program. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I would like you to carry with you, you don't have to share it here, but to carry with you at least one thing from this lecture that you will think about later on before you get to the United States and you will apply when you get there. Does anybody else want to share? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, you can speak in Serbian as well. Uh, treba, naprimer, ima uh -huh. uh -huh. Čekaj, 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 očiš da nam objasniš to malo bolje za ljude koji ne znaju. Šta je liker ID, šta je taj mesa ID? To je kao lična karta. Dobro. I bolje da se ima taj ID. Koji? Mesa ID. Mesa ID. I druga razlika, to je, znači da treba obrati pažnju da čim dođu tamo, da polažu za vožu. Za vožu. Iako imaju ovde vozačku dobu. Da, njihova, mislim, veći spektar poslova se može naći sa... Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Ok, je li imaš neko nešto što bi podelio neku asociaciju na ovo predavanje ili neko pitanje, može na srpskom, može na engleskom? Nema, ok. Završivamo sada sa jednom vežbicom koja će vam biti zabavna i kratka je iznad svega. A to je popunjavanje razglednice. Dobit ćete jedan template 
na kome treba da popunite šta su vaše očekivanja od ovog programa. I takođe da popunite svoje ime, prezime i adresu, a mi ćemo vam vratiti ovo, mi nećemo ovo ni da čitamo, vratit ćemo vam kad se završi program. Znači u oktobru kad se vratite sa programa dobit ćete mailom nazad ove razglednice. I setit ćete se šta ste očekivali pre početka programa, a kako je to zapravo prošlo do kraja.